During a conversation I recently had, I learned that no one needs a billion dollars and that being a billionaire was immoral. The point was raised that billionaires could easily cure world hunger, but don't. No one can become a billionaire without exploiting the masses as well. Honest to God, it was like talking to someone possessed by Karl Marx, or perhaps just the average college student in the United States. So many of them seem to think that Bernie Sanders has all the answers. Bernie Sanders, mind you, the same guy who said this. Hey, Bernie? Um, no. Just no. Reality isn't quite so cut and dried as only evil people have this much money. Speaking as a working class stiff, it's time for some roasted opinions on this subject. Okay, for perspective, in the United States, by many measures, the wealthiest nation in the world, the average full-time worker earns $46,800 per year. Project that over their working lifetime, and the average lifetime earnings of a worker in America are about $2 million before taxes. Now, contrast that with the fact that there are currently 2,153 billionaires in the world, 607 of which reside in the United States. Those billionaires have an aggregate net worth of $8.7 trillion, which means that the average billionaire is worth over $4 billion. That's a lot of cheddar. And yeah, according to the UN, just $30 billion per year would end world hunger forever. But, and I have to point this out, not one of those billionaires could end world of hunger. Not even Jeff Bezos, who is the richest man in the world, is worth over $109 billion. Now, to explain why no one person can end world hunger, I have to dispel a mistaken notion first. Billionaires aren't like Richie Rich, Scrooge McDuck, or Smog the Golden. They don't have enormous piles of cash big enough to fill vaults, to swim in, or upon which they take long naps. That's not how having massive amounts of wealth works. Cash money is a liquid asset, and most of the wealth of the richest people in the world is invested in hard assets. Take Jeff Bezos, for example. He's considered one of the world's wealthiest people because he owns millions of shares of stock in Amazon. The same can be said for Bill Gates, who's the second wealthiest at over $106 billion due to owning millions of shares of Microsoft stock. The same can also be said for Warren Buffett, whose net worth of over $84 billion is because of owning about 16 and three quarter percent of the outstanding shares of Berkshire Hathaway, the multinational he built out of a failing textile company, which famously has the most expensive Class A stock shares in the world. So in order to come up with $30 billion cash, these three men could sell off a significant portion of their stock, in theory, say about $10 billion worth each. But would that raise the cash? No. It would trigger a massive sell-off of those stocks as automated trading algorithms picked up on the massive sales and dumped their holdings in Amazon, Microsoft, and Berkshire Hathaway. The stock value of all three of these companies would absolutely tank due to those sales, possibly driving them into bankruptcy or receivership. It would trigger a run on all four major stock trading indices in the United States. That, in turn, would trigger ripple effects, which might just put the global markets into a recession. So, selling off that much stock is out. They could borrow the money from banks. Now, that's the typical route that billionaires and corporations use to generate large amounts of cash. The process is really similar to a mortgage, with the borrower putting up part of their shares in the company as collateral against the loan. The problem is that banks don't loan money without an expectation of return with interest. So they ask for a detailed explanation of how the money will be used and how the plan will generate profits. Charitable donations, by their nature, do not generate profits, so banks aren't about to loan tens of billions of dollars to finance them. Now, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett came up with a plan to get around these problems. The Gates Foundation currently has well over $50 billion in assets for their endowment and is able to distribute billions of dollars in support for a variety of reliable initiatives every year. It's still not enough to end world hunger. Warren Buffett came up with the idea to further the notion of using large amounts of wealth for the benefit of others. It's called the Giving Pledge. 
and Buffett and Gates were the first two to sign up to it. Wealthy people who join pledge to donate at least half of their wealth to philanthropic measures and organizations by the time that their will is distributed. So far, the plan has over 200 signatories, including about 170 billionaires, and represents well over a trillion dollars of pledged charitable contributions. Five of the ten wealthiest people in the world have signed the giving pledge. The belief that these billionaires couldn't have become billionaires without exploiting the working masses is the final issue which I will address. The notion that billionaires are all robber barons is just really absurd. The wealthiest amongst us are wealthy because they had a good business idea, or they were the children or grandchildren of someone who had a good business idea and made a successful company out of it. Jeff Bezos gave us Amazon. Bill Gates gave us Microsoft. Warren Buffett changed Berkshire Hathaway from a failing textile company into a multinational manufacturing conglomerate. Bernard Arnault is the genius behind dozens of fashion brands like Louis Vuitton. Carlos Slim Halu built a telecommunications giant in Mexico. Amancio Ortega gave us Zara. Larry Ellison created Oracle. Mark Zuckerberg launched Facebook. Michael Bloomberg co-founded Bloomberg Media. Larry Page co-founded Google. These are the top 10 billionaires in the world. Stop and think about how integral their companies and products are to daily life, and it will become understandable just why they became so extraordinarily wealthy. They're self-made, folks. And maybe people should spend a little less time bitching about the ethics of extreme wealth and a little more time looking at how they can create their own paths to success.